because I've got another one I want to try, and it is an old cowboy myth that involves gunpowder. Oh, you mean where the bad guy lays down the trail of gunpowder, it goes to the keg, he lights it, but the good guy rushes in and puts out the flame right before it reaches the keg? Oh, it's like you're a mind reader or something. That's exactly it. So it's Trailblazers Part 2. A lit trail of gunpowder is heading for a powder keg, and if it can't be stopped, disaster. But our hero saves the day by leaping ahead of the sparking fuse and kicking out the trail. On site supervising, it's pyrotechnician Rob Clot, and he's got the shaboom making materials. This is black powder. You can buy this in most gun shops, and it's actually the closest thing we have to what would be period correct for like a cowboy movie. First up, they're starting small, a trail just a few feet long. I think that's great. What do you think? I mean, this is just to see how what it does. Just see how it feels. Yeah. Right. Okay. To light it safely, Adam has pulled out all the stops to impress Rob. Uh, this is a uh, standard industry remote lighter. This is a, your, your butane torch on the end of a couple of tie straps on some structural aluminum providing some distance between me and a flame so I can light while I'm safely away from the explosion. All right. Everybody ready? Yeah. There we go. It's a little too fast. Yep, and the myth that you could run ahead of the burning fuse looks like it's gone up in smoke already. Gunpowder by design burns very quickly. When you have it inside a gun, it burns explosively quickly. When we lay it out in a line, it just kind of burns fast. Well, it behaved exactly the way I thought it would behave. In fact, you'll see that the, uh, the rating for this is... <laughs> which is pretty much the sound it made when we lit it. And that's what it's based on. What do you think we do now? Well, I think we need to come up with a more controlled way of laying down the powder. Something's very consistent and maybe a little less of it. Jamie, basing his design on an old-fashioned powder horn, soon has a solution. And they're ready to see how quickly a three-foot line of powder burns. Oh, look at that. That was really nice. That was much slower. And it was like... I thought that uh, if we laid out a line here and it was fairly visible black powder that it would go and just go really fast. But in fact, it seems to burn at a rate not unreasonably close to what I'm used to remembering in cowboy movies. I'm starting to think that um, if we laid out a line of powder like this, maybe 20 feet long with a you know, keg at the end that might blow up and I had a few seconds to run over and kick this line so it would stop igniting, I might actually be able to do that. I figure I could outrun that for you. Well, if you want to try, I say we get out to the bomb range and do it for real. Okay, let's, right, get, let's out get out of here. here. Alameda County Bomb Disposal Range. Adam and Jamie's second home. Another day at the bomb range. <laughs> That's right. And as usual, their hospitable host, keeping them out of hospital, is Sergeant J.D. Nelson. The bomb range is a perfect location for us because we can blow stuff up, but it's a little bit rocky. And it's, uh, it's dirt, so we want to be able to see the black powder. We're going to lay out basically a dance floor for dancing with the black powder. It's about 20 some odd sheets of plywood or chipboard that we're going to lay out in a line approximately 80 to 100 feet long. Should be plenty of a run for our black powder tests. Well, there you go, dance floor. My dance card is empty. Let's go! Adam's job is to kick out the line of burning powder before it reaches this. Now, for safety reasons, we're not going to put any powder in this. We're not quite ready for Adam to blow up just yet. What Jamie means is, for safety reasons, the keg will be empty. But at the end of an 80-foot trail of black powder, Adam can't resist adding a cup full of extra motivation. My motivation for this is really like, you know, humanity is going down the wrong path. That's the gunpowder line, and I'm the only one who can see that it's burning, and I've got to kick it out before it explodes. Oh. Two, three, here we go. It's not that hard to outrun it. Here it comes. I stopped it! <laughs> Look at that. Here, light this one. Ooh. 
It's like a really brisk walk, really. Here comes some things. <laughs> this is a fun job. <laughs> Well, I don't know about you, but it seems to me it doesn't move as fast as I thought it was going to move. I think it's pretty easy to run down a line of gunpowder and kick it out to stop it from blowing up. Do you want to give it a shot or do you think we've got this one in the bag? I'll give it a shot. Ready to race some powder. Adam, would you mind laying the powder? I'm just going to sort of relax and you can light it. I got a good view. Jamie's idea of racing is pretty laid back. Powder kick test number two. Grandpa Heineman presiding. Go! Jamie, cool as a cucumber, gives the fuse a good head start. Of course, he's thinking his only obstacle will be covering the ground in time. <laughs> oh, I'm still going! Yeah, you <laughs> It pushed me out of the way. What the hell was that? I was giving you more of a challenge. <laughs> we wanted to find out whether it is possible to outrun a burning line of powder, break the line, and stop it before it reaches the barrel and blows up the barrel. Turns out, it is. We did it. It's not that hard, really. So the movie myth that you can outrun a lit trail of gunpowder is confirmed. But the fun doesn't end there. The fuse is still burning on this fable. Jamie, despite unforeseen obstacles, is confident that you can outrun and kick out a burning fuse of gunpowder. The next thing we need to know is what would happen if you were not successful. Maybe somebody got in your way or pushed you and you know before you were able to do your job. Does the barrel blow up? Will it run up the stream of powder coming out of the barrel? Are we going to see a big explosion? It's a cartoon caper classic. The lit fuse of gunpowder leads right to the powder keg and... Kaboom! But would the barrel really blow, or would the fuse just fizzle out when it reaches the end of the line? Go ahead and plug it in. And to find out, they'll need to light the powder remotely. And our bright sparks have just the thing. See, it's a 20,000 volt neon transformer. I know that the electrical resistance of air is roughly 10,000 volts per centimeter, which means I only need to get the two ends of this transformer within two centimeters of each other for that arc to travel across them. And it is the most ideal thing to light the gunpowder. Perfect. Next, with Adam and Jamie displaying all the characteristics of kids who know the ice cream man is coming. Yet another thing to not try at home. Fill the keg with powder and lay down the road to explode. So as soon as the line gets here, shaboom! At least in theory. It's a theory they can't wait to put into practice. Plus, there's a breeze and a danger the black powder will soon be blowing in the wind. All right, let's do this thing. So it's double time down to the bunker. So I'm going to count it down. Tell me when you're set. I am totally set now. Okay, going in three, two, one. There it goes. Look at it go. The trail is ablaze, and just like in the movies, it races towards its destination. Come on, little buddy, don't burn out. Go, 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 go. A barrel full of big boom. Go, go, go. Come on. And... That was awesome! That was the best explosion we've ever done! <laughs> I that swear! Was a, that was a serious bang. This is one cinematic and cartoon cliche that does exactly what it says on the label. What happens when a burning line of gunpowder reaches a keg full of gunpowder? Exactly what you think. It's gonna blow up and that's what it did. Each one of these expands a little bit. And look at all the, the, the burn yeah, stripes exactly, on the exactly. inside. Yeah, exactly, exactly. It's quite clear <laughs> what it did, but it blew out both heads. It blew out the weakest part. If you watch the show at all, you know that I like to live my life halfway like an action movie hero and halfway like a cartoon character. And this explosion satisfied both of those halves of my personality. I proclaim it my favorite ever Mythbusters explosion. <laughs> 